here's what I'm convinced of. Drafting the hometown kid, hmm. for, if you're the hometown franchise, is an awesome storyline, but we never see how challenging it truly is. Because I'm convinced it sounds better on paper, it's better for the fans, than oftentimes how it actually plays out. I'm also convinced that the best time to play for the hometown team is at the end of your career. Mm. And I was listening to the radio this morning, and, and Ross Tucker was filling in for Dan Patrick, and he was talking about this, how when you get toward the end of your career, you want to go where you want to live after your career. Like, if you can parlay that into, uh, you know, where, where you you've, can buy a house, you live there while you finish your final few seasons, you, you establish some post playing business entities and community involvement, all that kind of thing, especially if you're an older player and you've got a family and your family can get plugged in. That's a great time. But to me, when I think about this, this last draft, you had Aiden Hutchinson go second overall to the Detroit Lions. He grew up, you know, he went to Michigan, grew up in the, in the Detroit area. And so now he goes there. On paper, it's awesome. It's like, oh, the hometown team, here we go, here we go. But think about what you have to factor in. You've got the pressure of you know, all the fans are, are counting on you to be the guy. you got to be the guy. Come on, you got to save Detroit. You know how it feels. <laughs> you know what it's like to be a Lions fan. you got to be the one that, that, that finally gets it done. And, and he's a defensive player. And so it's like, uh, how much can he do to, to be able to do that? Then you just have the practical day-to-day stresses of still being in your hometown as the go-to guy. Hmm. So now – Anyone you went to middle school with, anyone True. you went to high school with, True. anybody you went to college with, hey, man, remember me from from, soci- uh, from psychology class? Remember we worked <laughs> on that paper together? Hey, man, I was wondering if I could get some tickets to the, to the Bears game coming up next week. You got to deal with all that kind of stuff. And yeah. then you actually have good relationships. And so then, you know, normal people that you want to do life with, now they're asking you for things. Hey, man, can you show up to this event? Hey, I've got this charity event. Hey, I'm, I'm working on this business proposal. Do you want to be involved with that? So I just find it very interesting when these guys end up in this circumstance, the challenges that we don't, as the average fan, necessarily think about. Now, for me and the Panthers, we drafted uh, Icky. So he's from the area, and actually Josh, a guy, a part of our ministry in Unpacked Lunch, he, he's at the same school uh, that Icky went to high school at, and then he That's went cool. off to NC State. Um, so now he, but he grew up in the Charlotte area. He's from Africa. Um, but, but anyway, so now he'll be here, but here's what I'm not convinced of Luke. Hmm. I'm not convinced if I know whether it's easier or harder as like a, a a marquee player, like a, a a superstar versus a role player. If one's easier or harder being in the hometown, because to me, if you're an offensive lineman, maybe it's not as tough. And maybe even with Hutchinson as a defensive player, maybe it's not as tough as it would be for a quarterback. But like a couple of years ago, the Panthers actually drafted Will Greer, who was from Charlotte. It didn't work out. Now he ended up, I think he was with the Cowboys last year. I don't know if he's back. but Dallas, great. Um, so anyway, so hmm. I throw all that, all that out there just to, to, to think about his fans. Uh, and then today it was announced Tyron Matthew is, it looks like he's going to New Orleans. He's yep. from that area, went to LSU. Um, and so he kind of at the end of his career, middle to the end, We'll see how long he can play. He gets to be in his hometown team. So it's probably a big win. He gets to pick that uh, versus being selected um, by a team in the draft. So where, where do you come out on this? Shannon says those are good problems for, for a player to have. In some ways, yes. You got millions of dollars. Oh, how am I going to spend it? But you also have all your family members saying, hey, man, can I just get – I just need $500. Hey, I just need $1,000. Hey, man, I just got this, uh, this school project going on. And it's tricky. It's a little tricky. So, the the uh, the Chargers running back who we had on the podcast, yes, Joshua Kelly, he talked about that on. Hey, hey, can I get some tickets? Yep. Hey, can I? Now, I don't know. I don't know what kind of school you went to where they're having psychology classes uh, offered in middle school and high school. So oh, I had some a, I uh, had, Charlotte I could, prep school you went to. No, I had I, I took one in college and high school. I liked psychology. I minored in sociology. I like sociology a little bit better, oh. but I was intrigued with He's psychology. a man of the people, man of the culture. That's right. That's right. So let me just play devil's advocate here. Is it – I don't know if it's guaranteed that, oh, let me wait to go to my home team. I'll move there. I want to live here. Because 
if you're not careful and you have a great career, a great first six years, seven years of your career at one team, you might be living there. This might be your new hometown, depending on Absolutely. how well you play. Because you think of all, all the legends, it's they end up. it feels like they end up staying at the place that they built out a Hall of Fame career at. That's their new hometown. Great point. Great point. So I thought that I think that's interesting. And I think there's almost more pressure on a role player, a guy trying to make the team in their hometown. Yep. Because everyone's watching them. Everyone sees from the hometown if they get cut. Ever you see him at the grocery store. Hey man, how's oh yeah, man, I'm on practice squad. Oh, how's it going? You see him at, at the movie theater, the grocery store. How's it going? I actually it just got cut. Or yeah, I'm actually fighting for my life to make this team. So as a guy trying to make it in the NFL, your hometown, there's many days where you may not want to show your face in the community because mm. you're going to run into a, a classmate. You're going to run into a teacher. And the only thing you're going to talk about is, hey, how's it going on whatever NFL, NFL franchise you're on? So I think that's another added pressure. If you're a big star, you're going to be fine. But if you're a role player trying to make the team, everyone is watching you in your community. I think I agree with that. I do. And and here are some examples of players who ended up at, at least at one point in their career played for at least you know the closest team to, to kind of where they grew up. So, of course, the best example of this is LeBron James. Yeah. He drafted by Cleveland, then he goes back to Cleveland. That, of course, worked out well. Cal Ripken Jr. from the Maryland area played played at Baltimore, for the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, Derek Rose, Chicago. Played for the Bulls. True. Uh, Clyde Drexler. He played high school and college in Houston. And then, he, remember, he went back to Houston. They won that second championship with him, um, him and Akeem Olajuwon. And then, uh, let's see, James Conner. Similar situation. Oh, here's the other. I, I didn't even mention this. Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett was yeah. just drafted by Pittsburgh. This is the reason why I'm bringing up this topic. So I apologize. <laughs> I didn't mention him earlier. But this Bearing the thing, lead here. Yeah, I know. So James <laughs> Conner, the same thing. Remember, he played for Pittsburgh. Yep. And then, and then uh, was drafted by the Steelers as well. Now he's in Arizona, uh, so that kind of worked out. He had a couple good seasons there. He was but really now good. They're, they're, the Steelers are running this back. They're, yeah, they're true. They're looking out in their backyard, saying, "All right, who can we get from Pittsburgh?" All right, <laughs> and and so they they've now got Kenny Pickett as their 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 guy. We'll see. Mitch Trubisky is still there. Uh, they brought him off, over in the off season as well. Um, and then another win was Derek Brooks. Born in Florida, played for Florida State, drafted by Tampa Bay. He's a lifer, Hall of Famer, still down there involved with, with them. Um, so that, that worked out really well. You know, over the years, Michael Jordan has drafted Carolina players that haven't worked out well or, or local guys. Yeah. So uh, that's an example. I'm not sure if you can think of any Cowboy examples over the years. Smaller but names, but yeah, smaller names. Cole Beasley from Little Ooh. Elm, which is you know, a Dallas suburb, and then went to SMU. And then he wasn't draft. I think he went undrafted, but played for the Cowboys. Was an awesome Cowboy. So that was really cool. And then Connor Williams went to high school with me. It was actually on my youth football team in second. My first tackle football team. Connor Williams, future NFL starting offensive lineman. Hey Luke, yeah, you're going to be tight end. Yeah, you're going to block Connor Williams every practice. I mean, wow. my gosh, was I in concussion protocol twenty four seven? I mean, geez Slap. Louise, thank Please. goodness they moved me to quarterback, but. So he's a guy that's There's a good humble brag in there too. Yeah, humble yeah, brag, humble brag. humble brag, humble brag. Yeah. I like that. There you so go. So he's from Coppell, went to Texas, and then drafted by the Cowboys in the second round. But for him, it's interesting because there was a lot of Cowboy fandom disappointment in Connor Williams. Not that, not like, oh man, our hometown guy, but just Cowboys fans in general. There were some issues they had with Connor Williams. And he lives in the area. He lives in the oh, same town as his family. Tough. And oh. I, I can't imagine how much pressure. So I think, I wonder if it's a breath of fresh air to not be a Cowboy this next season. To be in a place where you don't have family and high school classmates potentially running into you every other day. Yeah. No, it's, I think, I just think there are a lot of advantages and disadvantages that you have to factor in. But I do think like throughout the draft, fans are thinking, draft the hometown guy like we know who he is and we want to see him we want to continue to watch him play and so yeah. there's almost pressure sometimes that, that teams whether yes. they care or not they have to at least feel it from fans yeah. to say hey go get this guy go get this guy you know and it's it's interesting too the Steelers they picked Pickett over Malik Willis and and some you know a lot of people had Willis maybe higher on on the draft board 
uh, compared to him, um, which we're going to talk about quarterbacks in a moment. But but Pittsburgh went with kind of who they know and, and who the fans know. And yeah. so I'm curious. I, I texted my, my buddy Paul, who's a big Steelers fan. M- mixed reaction about that. And let's um, be honest. If you're a home, t- if you go, if you get drafted by your hometown team, and you do well there, you're a legend. Legend, you're hero. an absolute legend. And everyone talks about, oh, to go get to play for the team that you're actually a fan of as well. That's pretty awesome. And you have success there. Legend, absolute legend. But it's especially tough when you go to, like I was mentioning, with the Lions, the Browns, but Joe Burrow, Cincinnati Bengals. Yep. So far, so good. Yep. So that that was a, a big win for for them to to snag him. So uh, yeah, so so some different examples. Curious who comes to mind for you and your favorite team uh, that was a hometown player. You know, whether high school, college, either way, some kind of connection. Uh, you know, for me with the Hornets, I'd love Steph Curry to finish his career in Charlotte. Just How cool would that be? It was a couple good years, man. Uh, Dell, of course, his dad played for the Hornets. But all right, so uh, that's what we're convinced of today. 